In this video, we're going to look at quantification regions and specifically a parameter that is labeled AV width and how this parameter AV width influences the precision with which we can measure a peak area using a quantification region, which also has implications for measuring the peak area when we use components in a peak model. When a region is created, an interval is defined and the interval specifies the range over which the integration of a peak area will be performed. The background parameter determines the type of algorithm that's used to measure the peak area and the AV width is a parameter that allows us to specify how the background should relate to the intensity of data at either end of this energy interval. The two parameters within this region that I've highlighted, the background type and the average width, behave differently in terms of calculating a peak area. The background type alters the area of the peak. So this represents a parameter that changes the accuracy with which we measure a peak. So for example, if I enter T and press return, I get a two-gar background, and this is based on a universal cross-section. And this result in an area that is significantly different from the area that is calculated when we use a Shirley background. Quite obvious the change in the shape of the background will certainly alter the peak area. So our choice of background will alter the accuracy with which we calculate the intensity of a photo emission peak. The average width parameter is different in the sense that this influences the precision with which we measure the area of a peak. So once we've selected a background type and we've made an informed decision about how we wish to calculate the peak area, then the area that we calculate is influenced by the average width in terms of precision of measuring that area. The precision with which a peak area is measured can be enhanced if we were to measure these data with improved sensitivity that is to say the count rate increases if we use a higher pass energy or a wider aperture. The cost of using a higher pass energy and a wider aperture is that the shapes within the peaks are then influenced by the instrument. So there is a balance between the precision and the sensitivity that is appropriate for calculating chemical state information. And in this case this is germanium oxide on germanium and we would like to see the ratio of these oxide and elemental peaks for germanium. So increasing sensitivity is not necessarily the best for this type of analysis. An alternative to using improved sensitivity is to increase the dwell time per bin. And this, because of Poisson statistics for pulse counted data, will improve the precision with which we know the intensity for each data bin. Now the consequences of increasing the dwell time is that you increase the measurement time and potentially the degradation of the sample. So this is not always the best option. However, for a given measurement, the influence of dwell time can be used to improve the precision with which we identify the intensity for these endpoints of the background, and this is performed using the average width. The average width allows us to specify an interval over which the intensity is calculated from more than one data bin. So when I specify 10, I'm actually specifying 10 points outside of the interval and 10 points inside of the interval. And the average of these intensities are used to work out a value that can be assigned to the background at this end of the energy interval. And a similar calculation is performed at the other end of the interval. The consequence of using a larger average width is that we're targeting an area of the spectrum where you could either consider this as we've counted for longer in order to acquire an intensity or another way of looking at this is that we've changed the sensitivity in an interval so within this interval and this interval we've effectively lost our energy resolution but we've used it to calculate a more precise intensity that we can assign to the background there are two modes for this average width there's either a straight average, and this assumes that the interval contains data that can be approximated by a straight line. In other words, there's no curvature in the data. However, there's another mode that is targeting data where there is curvature. So for example, in this case, we have a clear curve here in the data. 
So if I in increase the average width to say 30, because we're in a linear part of the data here, that the background and the data appear to meet at a reasonable position. However, because the data has curvature in this zone here, that is not a good approximation to a, a straight line, the background has raised up above the data. And what we need to do is account for this curvature and also allow an averaging in order to improve the stability of the intensity we use to define the background at the start of this interval. The alternative to a straight average is to calculate a polynomial that fits the data within this interval specified by the average width. We can switch to this alternative mode by pointing at the field before it is an edit field. So I cannot edit the 30 by entering a new number at this point. I would have to click here in order to turn it into an edit field. So in this state, I hold the control key down and click. Then an option is given to me whether I want to switch between the average mode or to fit these data. And when I say fit, this means fitting a polynomial to these data based on the interval specified by the average width. So we observe the position for the background that is currently calculated by a linear approximation. If we say yes, the background now snaps to the data. And this is because rather than a straight line approximation, a polynomial in this instance of degree six has been fitted through these data. And the point at which the data meets the background has been calculated from that polynomial. Intuitively, the idea of averaging data to try and improve the quality of the background definition seems sensible. However, up to this point, I have not shown any quantitative evidence that this is true. So what I'll do now is add a quantification table. I'm going to add the standard deviation in the area and the relative error in the area that's calculated based on a region. I'll disable the position of fourth half maximum and also the percent area and then press apply. So now we have a table that is populated with the name, the area, the standard deviation and the relative error. And we can calculate the relative error using a Monte Carlo simulation based on an average width of 30. So when I press the calculate error bars, a simulation is performed. And then if we look at the table, once completed, the relative error will be reported. So we end up with a value of 1.86 for the percent relative error. And this is about 2% when I use 30 for the average width, which means I'm actually using 61 data bins. If I change this and enter zero rather than 30 for the number of data bins, I'm using a single point at the start. And I'm using a single point at the end to calculate the intensity for the background. And now simulating once again, we see that the error is about 6%. So using 30 makes a significant difference to how precise we can be about the peak area.